I showered him with blessings. I gave him his provisions in abundance. Whatever he asked for, I gave him and I gave him more. My friends, the hands with which we touch, the feet with which we walk, the tongue that does the talking, the mouth with which we eat, the ears with which we hear, the eyes with which we see. Look at these countless blessings of Allah. All of a sudden, Allah's taken away your eyesight. Now, there's total darkness in front of you. What do you think will happen? And now you're panicking, you're sweating, you're not, you haven't uttered anything to anyone. You begin to look to your right, it's darkness again. You look into your left, there's darkness again. Now my friend, you will feel in a manner like you never felt in your entire life. And now, you know if you were a multi-billionaire, and this thing called eyesight was sold on the market, I'm prepared to swear by Allah that you will spend your billions just so that you can buy one blessing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. This is why Allah will say, I gave him everything. I gave him blessings upon blessings. You never asked for them. Tell me my young friend, when was the last time you ever raised your hand and you thanked Allah for these eyes? When was the last time you ever raised your hand and you thanked Allah for all these blessings that he gave you? My friends, you didn't ask for them, but you know what? He was the Arhamul Rahimeen, the Akramul Akrameen, the Ajwadul Ajwadeen. Without you asking, without you begging, without you prostrating, he would give, he would give, he would give. Give. You had time to wine and dine, but the only thing and being that you didn't have time for, for the one that gave you these zillions and zillions of blessings. He allowed you to make toba because he accepts toba. He embraces those that turn to him. Till when? Before the soul comes out of your body. He was waiting patiently. Maybe Abdullah today will embrace me. Indeed, he's lived, lived 99 years of sin. Maybe today he will embrace me. Maybe today he will turn to me. But Abdullah didn't. He was still arrogant. Right till death do his part. Allah will say, now bring him. His time's come to an end. He lived a life of sin. He didn't believe. He rejected. And when Allah sends the angel of death, he says to him, bring him to me. The angel of death will go. He will have 12 eyes. He will carry a forked mace made out of fire. My friends, he will have with him 500 angels will accompany the angel of death. He will assume the most horrifying and frightening form any human has ever seen. 500 angels are with him. They will bring a piece of copper. They will bring huge embers of Jahannam. This is how he will come to receive the soul of the enemy of the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. Ibn Abbas relates that on one occasion, Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, asked the angel of death. He said, oh angel of death, show me the form that you assume when you come to take the soul of a, a good believer, the sons of the Akhirah, the followers of Rasulullah, the lovers of Rasulullah wasalam, tell me how do you take their soul? So the angel of death said, Ibrahim, turn your face away. After a short while, he looks at the angel of death and what does he find? He finds a very handsome young man, beautiful of face, beautiful clothing, you know, sweet smell emitting from his body. When Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, saw such a handsome sight, he said to uh, say, uh, the angel of death, if this was the only blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for a believer, just looking at the beauty of your face, that would be sufficient. Ibrahim said, okay, now I want you to show me the form that you take when you take the soul of a disobedient servant of Allah. The angel of the said, said uh, to Ibrahim, Ibrahim, no. Even though you, that you're a great Nabi of Allah, you will not be able to tolerate this, O Ibrahim. Ibrahim insisted, alayhi salam. Looked away, after a short while, he looks again. What does he see? What he saw was a man, dark black, black clothing. His head is in the heaven. His feet is on the earth. Flames of fire coming out of his nostrils. Flames of fire coming out of his mouth. Ibrahim couldn't tolerate this. He fainted. When he finally gained consciousness, 
he turned round to the angel of them and said, if this was the only punishment that Allah has in store for a dying servant that is disobedient, then that would be sufficient. No other punishment would be required for him. So this is how the angel of death comes to receive this person. Like I said, you can hide wherever you want. Be it for Knox or be it in the depths of the Atlantic. When your time comes, hopefully inshallah, the angel of death will not come to you and me in this form. Because inshallah, we are obedient servants of Allah and to the best of our ability, we will remain obedient till death do us part. Insha'Allah. Well, my friend, for those that don't, you can hide in four knocks or the death of some ocean or the peak of some mountain. No fall to South Pole. When your time comes to an end, the barrier will be removed and this is what you will see. And he will begin to extract the soul and he will start from the tips of your toes and he will extract the soul and he will stop here where your ankle is. And he will twist and turn. And you know the angels that have come with these whips made out of fire? They will beat him like never before. The body will swoon. He will extract the soul from the ankle. He will stop at the knee. He will twist and turn while the other angels beat. He will then extract from the knees. He will stop at the waist. He will twist and turn and the angels will beat him. He will now stop here to the chest, twist and turn. They will take the soul to the neck. They brought this piece of copper from Jahannam. They will place it here. They brought these huge embers of Jahannam. They will place them here also. Now my young friends, the angel of death will call out. Come out a cursed soul to a place of scorching wind. Shadows of black smoke. No cool, no refreshing. Now the soul will come out of the body. The soul is out. What do you think will happen next? You know when people get caught out, you begin to blame one another. Now here, your own body and your soul will begin to fight. They will begin to lay blame. The soul will curse the body and the body will curse the soul. The soul will say to the body, May Allah give you a bad reward. You were quick in disobeying the Almighty Allah. You were slow in obeying Him. Not only have you destroyed yourself, you have also destroyed me. Me, the soul will be punished, and you, the body, will also be punished. The soul will curse the body, and the body will begin to curse the soul. Here, they're fighting with one another. My friends, now, the earth on which you wronged Allah, and you committed sin, this earth will want nothing to do with you and this earth will begin to curse you. This earth will curse you and this earth will thank the Lord of the Arsh and Gursi. Ya hey Allah, millions and millions of thanks for you that today you have rid me of the evil of this man called Abdullah. While this is happening, the army of Iblis will come to Iblis. They're rejoicing, they're partying and they will say to Iblis, Oh Iblis, today we have sent one of the sons of Adam to Jahannam. My young friend, now your soul has been taken out of the body. The hadith of Barai ibn Azib says, the angels that have come with the angel of death, they will not leave the soul inside his hand. They'll quickly take the soul from him and the cloth that they brought from Jahannam, they will place the soul inside that cloth. You know, this soul will begin to smell. Now, the journey of the heavens will begin. Every time this group of angels passes by a group of angels, the group of angels will ask, whose is this impure soul that you take into the heavens? They will say, this is the soul of so and so person, the son of so and so person. And they will call him with the bad names with which he was known within the dunya. Now they take him to the heavens and they knock on the heavens. My friends, for him, the door will not be open. And these people, they will not enter paradise till a camel will enter the eye of a needle. It's impossible. It can't happen. And Allah will call out, write the scroll of this person in the lowest hell in the lowest earth. And his soul will be thrown down, hurled down. This is when Rasulullah ﷺ read the verse of the Qur'an. Whoever associates partners with Allah is like he's fallen from the heaven. And the birds have picked him up or the wind has carried him to a distant land. Now, 
my friends, his soul will be returned inside his body, inside his grave. Now it will be the grave's turn. The grave will say, out of all the people that walked on me, you, Abdullah, was the one I hated most of all. Oh, Abdullah, I've been waiting for you all this time. I've been waiting for you to come to me. Now that you have come to me today, today I will make you pay the price. Today you will know how I will deal with you. At that time, my young friends, the grave will embrace him with such force that the ribs of one side, they will penetrate into the other side. And now, the angels Munkar and Nakir will come. Jibra'il Amin on one occasion asked Rasulullah, okay, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to describe these angels for me. So Nabi Kareem was told, O okay, oh Muhammad, without telling you the size of these angels, that their eyes glitter like lightning. You've seen a flash of lightning. This is how their eyes glitter. You know their voices rumble like thunder. Their teeth are like the horns of a bull. Their hair reach their feet. The distance between their shoulders is miles apart. Rasulullah was told that in these people, there is not even an ounce of mercy inside their hearts. Their mercy is only for the true believers. They will come to everyone. Each one of them will carry a hammer of steel. My young friends, all those within the dunya, from the human kind and jinn kind, if they were to get together just to pick up one of these hammers, never mind moving it an inch, they will not be even be able to move it a millimeter. They will come to him in his grave. They will reproach him. They will ask the three questions. Man rabbuk, ma dinuk, man Who is your Lord? If you haven't lived a life according to the teachings of Allah and his Rasul wasallam, you know what? You will not have the answer. He didn't listen to Allah. He didn't follow the teachings of Rasulullah. He was following his desires. So what is he going to say? La ha ha la adri. I don't know. What's your deen? There was no deen in his life, yeah? You know, he believed that, you know, you turn to Allah when you're 70. You know, when you can't pull anymore, you've got nowhere to go, you become weak, wrinkles on your faces. This is what he believed, that you go for hajj at that age, till then, you know, you enjoy. So what's he going to say? What's your deen? There was no deen in his life. Man has a rajul. Who was this man? He didn't know who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. He used to follow people like, you know, these, the movie stars, these pop stars. What's he going to turn around? What's he going to say? He's going to have an answer. Ha ha la adri. And at that time, my friends, they will strike him with that mace. With such force, my young friends, that the sparks will spread throughout the grave. And it will be said to him, look above. And a door will be opened to paradise. He will be able to see the blessings of paradise. And it will be said, O enemy of Allah. How do you worship Allah? Then this was your abode. But you didn't. Rasulullah at that time swore by his life. He will feel such regret, the likes of which he's never felt before. You know, he's seeing Jahannam. And he knows now that he's been deprived. He knows what's going to happen thereafter. At that time, Rasulullah swore by his life that, that that individual will feel such regret, the likes of which he's never felt before. A door will be open towards hell. This is your abode because you disobeyed Allah. And the hot air of Jahannam will keep on entering his grave. And he will roast right till the day of judgment. Thereafter, a man will come inside his grave. And this man will begin to mock. He'll begin to take the mick. And he will say to him, you know what? Abshir, good news. Glad tidings of what? Of that which troubles you. This is the day that you were promised. But you refused to believe. You didn't believe that you were going to die. You didn't believe there will be accountability. You didn't believe that the angel will come. Today, you will pay the price. And he will ask, and who are you? Your face brings bad news. He will turn and say to him, you know the bad deeds that you performed in the dunya? I am those deeds. Allah has given me a body so that you can see what you did in the dunya. And my friends, when he can see his deeds before him in the form of a body, he will begin to beg the Almighty Allah. Oh Allah, I beg you, do not bring the final hour.